church say amen? Church say amen again. Now if y'all was clapping for me, that'd be all right. I said that the church say amen. The Bible was saying this morning, and you went up and saw to make a choice. against them 
and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ. God made his appeal to us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. For a few moments today, I want to talk about bridging. Those of you that have your Bibles, don't put them down. We will eventually make our way back to 2 Corinthians. The pandemic has shown us that we can't keep doing things the same way and expect different results. We literally have to change the way that we do Some of us remember back in 9 11, after the towers went down, it changed forever the way that we do travel. This pandemic has had the same effect on us now. We probably won't go back to doing things the way they were always done. Therefore, there's going to have to be a new normal. The way we interact and engage with, with each other, other holds true in the same regards. Here we are at church, having to sit six feet away and engage each other differently. I can't shake your hand, you can't shake mine, we can't hug and engage the way. We have to do things differently than we know how and may be comfortable with. As we grow in place, we must make sure that we don't keep doing the same things over and over again and expecting different results. God is just as relevant today as he was a thousand years ago. God is relevant today as he was two thousand years ago. But what has changed is the time, the environment, and the people. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, but we have to make sure that we're engaging God in such a way that what we do and how we represent who we serve is relevant in today's society. What do we as a church have to say about who God is in the midst of this pandemic and moving forward? Who are we as a church? What message are we sending to the world out there? Are we giving them a message of hope? Are we showing them that there is a better way? Are we reminding them that in the midst of everything that goes on, I have faith. I know that things are going to get better. And even if they don't, I know that God is able. He is able. Whether he heals me on this side or the next, he is He's able. So then, as the church, what is the message that we're sending? And then, in the church, what is the message we're telling each other? The truth and need for the application of the Word of God has not changed. But how it is understood within a modern context, in, within a modern context, is where we have become short sighted. I know what I know what I mean. If we want to truly 
receive the power of God manifest in our lives and in the lives of the church and the world around us, there is a work that we must do first and foremost in ourselves. How many of you can truly say that you came out of this pandemic unscathed? We've all been affected in some way and the changes that it's forced upon us. Yet if we want to see God move mightily in our lives, we must do our part and allow ourselves to be healed from the hurts of the world. Those that are self-inflicted as well as those that occur and happen to us throughout our lives. So I ask each of you today, are you well? Are you okay? Are you healthy? And if not, how do we heal? How do we take care of ourselves? And watch this. How do we take care Go further than six feet. How do we deal with everything coming all around us? Here's a key to that that I think we've forgotten. We need each other. Let me say that again. As simple as it is, but let me say that again. We need.
thing about the other person may be thinking or feeling or going through before responding and telling them what thus saith us instead of what thus saith the Lord. Some of y'all miss that. Sometimes we say what thus saith us as opposed to what thus saith the Lord. And part of the reason why is thus saith us and not thus saith the Lord because we're not getting to know God for who he is for ourselves. We're not getting in the word. You're not studying to show thyself approved or working that he does not be ashamed of right in the body and learn the truth. If you don't know who God is in the word for yourself, then you need to keep your mouth shut about what God says and what God did say. Not the saith the preacher. Not the saith the deacons. Not the saith the trustees. Not the saith the ushers. Not the saith the shepherd. But what did God say? What did God say? Just hold on, I might need you a minute. We need each other. If we are to heal and become the church. First Corinthians 12, I just I just gave you this 12 through 27. Listen to what it says. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in one spirit we are all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and all were made to drink of one spirit. For the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make me less part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would be the sense of hearing? If the whole body were an ear, where would be the sense of smell? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them, as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Nor again, the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And all of these parts of the body that we think less honorable, we bestow with greater honor. And our unpresentable parts are treated with greater modesty. Which our more presentable parts do not require. But God has so composed the body giving greater honor to the part that lacked it, that there may be no division in the body. But that the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together. If one member is honored, all rejoice together. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. If one suffers, we all suffer. If one is honored, we all are honored. If one is disrespected, we're all disrespected. If one is hurt, we're all hurt. So how do we heal? I want to give you a couple of points and I'm going to take my seat. In order to heal, we must first acknowledge that there is a need. Can you openly, honestly say that I have a problem and I need some help? What are you doing today to guard your heart? Yeah, y'all got quiet on that part. What are you doing today to guard your thoughts and guard your mind? What are you doing today to guard and protect your body? What steps are you taking to make sure that you are the best version of yourself so that God can get the glory through you and through your story? What secrets are you hiding that are 
walking in the way that she does. You know that sin will so easily possess you, that trips you up all the time. When you go not to your prayer closet, but into that other closet. What secrets are you hiding that are eating away at you? That you can't get a good night's sleep because you're busy dealing with that thing and your mind just won't be around. What secrets are you hiding? Desire to do better. Number one, we have to acknowledge that there's a need. Secondly, if we want to heal, we have to ask God to reveal the underlying issues. God exposes you not to embarrass you, but to show you who you really are. Are so that he can deal with who you really are, so that he can make you in who to who you're supposed to be. But we get scared when God shows us who we really are. We are sinners saved by grace. Ain't nobody in here that has less than us. But can you honestly admit to your shortcomings? Can you allow God to expose you so he can fix you? We have also created environments for long-term dynamic change. We want God to be the microwave God, to push the 30-second pop button and fix it, Jesus. But we have to make sure that we're creating environments for long-term dynamic change in the lives of ourselves and the lives of those that are affected by us. In other words, you have to get in position to receive what God has for you. You cannot receive with a closed fist. You can only receive with an open hand, an open heart, an open mind, open to the Spirit of God to do that which He wants to do in your life when He chooses to do it and how He chooses to do it. But if we keep ourselves closed because of guilt, shame, and embarrassment, because you messed up, the guilt is carrying you, you're ashamed of what you did and who you used to be, and you're embarrassed to tell somebody how you got over it. But here's what you're missing. Your testimony is the story that tells the world who you used to be, but it took a father in heaven who sent his only begotten son to die on Calvary's cross so we can have a right to the remission of sin and have a right to the tree of life. He saw you sitting in the deep and saying, Far from the people's soul, bear the deep and say, From the water, he lifted me. Now, say, am I love lifted me? But if you're ashamed to tell the story, if, if, if the guilt is too heavy, if, if, if the world is too scary, then God. Is not in a position to bless others through you. Because here's the thing about God. He's never going to force you to do anything you don't want to do. That's just not his character. That's not his nature. We have to be open. We need the power of
that the Holy Ghost is just something that falls every now and again, makes people run around the church, makes people shout, and makes them clap their hands, makes them speak in tongues, makes them do all kinds of things. But the Holy Ghost, the Bible declares it, the Greek word is the paraclete. The parity, that word literally means to come alongside you. The Holy Spirit wants to come alongside you and to be not just the help needs, but to lead you and to guide you into all truth. And watch this, not just some truth, but all truth, including the truth that is you. Not only does he acknowledge there's a need, not only does he ask God to reveal the underlying issues, once things have been revealed, we now have to address the underlying issue. Call a spade a spade. In love. But that's not what we do. We talk about each other behind our backs, behind people's backs. We pick up the phone and call and we create this phone chain and we're tearing people down instead of actually addressing the issue head on. The Bible says if you have a fault with your brother, go to your brother. So if you're not going to that person and addressing that issue one on one with that person, then you are in error. And guess what? That's not the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God can tell you to go talk about somebody else. Not if you know your Bible. If it's been so heavy on you that someone is in error and is doing something out of line and out of order, then the biblical way to resolve that is to go to that brother or that sister and address it to them one on one. If they do not receive you, then now you bring no witness. If that does not work, then you bring it to the church. That is a biblical way to resolve conflicts. Know your Bibles. And if you don't do it that way, you, sir, you, ma'am, are an error. And the Spirit of God will call you. And that is not God's plan. In order to address the underlying issue, you got to be willing to put in the word. The Bible says, faith without works is what? Some of y'all know about it. Faith without works is what? A lie. Faith without works is what? Dead. Don't tell me you have faith in God, but you don't put your faith in action. Don't tell me you have faith in God, but you wait for God to come back and do something and touch that person out there across the street when you see them laying on the street and they need some help, but you don't wait for the Holy Ghost to tell you what to do. You see it, therefore you have responsibility to help your fellow man. So the Spirit of God has already told you what you need to do because it's in His Word. Put your faith in action. Do this with divine partnership. Jesus said, cast your cares unto me because I care for you. He understands. He was tempted to try in every point, and he never sinned. So if we need help, if we hook up with Jesus and stop hooking up with Tom, Dick, and Harry, Sally, Sue, and Jane, and start hooking up with Jesus and getting in his word and allowing the Holy Spirit to truly minister to us and enter into a divine partnership that we can understand what resources and support are available to us. And then he starts to talk about this word called forgiveness. Forgiving yourself for some of the decisions that you've made. Forgiving yourself for the way that you acted the other day. Forgiving yourself for the choices that you made. It's not just about forgiving someone else. Some of us have not forgiven ourselves for messing up. And we've been carrying that burden around for 30, 40 years because we made a choice that set us on this path. And everything that we have had to deal with is because 
because we never let go and ask God to forgive us of the choice that we made. And I'm so ready to let that burden go, but I'm afraid of what it might be if I let it go. Because I let it define me for so long, I can't let it go. But if you let go and let God watch what God can do and will do.
Can you forgive? Thank you for this moment that you've given us to bask in your spirit. Because oftentimes we invoke your presence. But here's what we know your spirit is already here. So we just want to access what you've given us. Access. Touch us today, O oh God. Heal us today. Was God with 